Hey coders and welcome to episode 3 of our JDBC service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In today's episode we're going to be learning how to read our query results sets. From our last episode we learned that results sets are what is returned to us when we make a query to a database and remember a query is defined as a read operation so when you ask the database for some data, then it's going to return that data in a results set object. And now in this episode, we're going to be learning how to unpack that object to get the actual data. So we're going to be learning the top five methods for today, which are get results set, get string, get double, get date, and get boolean. In those last four methods, you can see that we can use either the column index or the column label when we are getting these data types. So let's see what I'm talking about in the code right now. So far in our JDBC journey, we have created a new Cloud SQL instance within Google Cloud, and we can see that right here. And then we have connected to that instance from our app script editor using the method get Cloud SQL connection. After that, we wrote up some valid SQL code and then sent those statements to our database. But where we stopped in the previous episode is that we only sent those statements to the database, but if we were querying that database, we would want the database to then send the data back into our app script editor so that we could parse it, so that we could read it, and then so that we could use it. So that is exactly what we're gonna learn how to do in this episode here. So I have a SQL statement right here where this is a query. And if you remember from our past episode, our last episode, then we can query our database using two different methods. One is execute query. And then the second is just the generic general uh, method of execute. Now it's slightly different for, for accessing the results set in between these two methods. So I'm gonna go through them one by one. The first way is through the execute query method. So the advantage of using execute query is that you are letting the app script editor know that you are indeed sending a query statement to the database so it can expect a result set in its return value. So it's going to return a results set object and then we are going to store that now in this variable right here, query. Now, just like a connection or a statement, it's always good practice to close that result set when you are done using it. So I'm gonna go down to the bottom of my function and just quickly write query.close. Again, it's not technically necessary, but it is good practice to do this. All right, so first off, let's see what this results set object looks like. So I'm just going to say longer log query and then we're going to send in this query right here, select everything from flights. Now I'm gonna save it and I'm going to run it. And there we go. So we're getting a results set object. Now you may have expected that it would give us a, say a table just like this. See, we ran this same statement in the terminal. We connected to our instance via the terminal. We ran this statement and it returned us a, a, an entire table. But that is not what we see in the app script editor. It just gives us a results set object. Now I want you to think of a results set object as basically an iterator. And if you need some more support or some more coverage on what an iterator is, I actually created an episode, episode 10.1, when we were covering the Drive app on what iterators are. Basically, this table could get into the millions of rows and it, and if you and if you executed this query, it wouldn't want to send so much data back to you. So what it does is it sends an iterator back to you. And an iterator, you have to cycle through each record one by one. So how do you do that? Well, you're going to need to call on the method dot next. So what dot next will do is it will go on to the next record of that table, and then it's going to return true if that record actually exists and false if it doesn't. So the only time it would return false is if it has reached the end of the results set, there's no more records to show, then it will return false. 
So there's a nice trick that you can do when you're cycling through all of the different records. You can actually uh, surround this, wrap it in a while statement. So you're going to say while query has next and then do something with that record. Now when you're working with a results set ob object, you can't really get the entire row of data. So even though it's going to be cycling record by record, you can't say just get me the entire row. What you have to do is you need to get individual pieces of data by the column. So let's do that right now. So again, our results set is right here. And actually, what I want to show you the data in an array. So I'm going to actually create a new array. I'm going to say let array equals just this empty array for now. And then I'm going to say, as we cycle through the records, I'm going to say array dot push. And I'm going to push in a new array in and of that uh, original array. So it's going to be a two dimensional array. All right, so what are we going to be pushing in? Well, we're going to have to push in, again, the individual pieces of data. So if we say query dot get, there are a lot of different data types that we can use. So uh, so for this first column, flight ID, it's definitely going to be a string. So we're going to have to say query dot get string. And then we're going to specify the index of that column. So there's two, way, again, there's two ways of doing this. Again, we can either specify the index or we can specify the actual label. So the string label of that column. So let me start off with the index. So I'll say query dot get string of the first column. So that's going to return for us all of the data from this first column right here. And then we're just going to do that for all of the other columns right here. So we have eight columns in total. So let me just do that real quickly. I'm going to speed up this video right now. All right, so now I'm trying to get all of the columns as a string. And you can actually do this. If, if, you're, if the data within your table actually isn't a string, such as, this, uh, such as this column right here, distance, this is definitely not a string. This is a double. You can still get it as a string, and then, and, then, and then that will still work. So let me hit the Run button now and show you why this might not be the best choice of action, though. So we got all of the data and all of this as, as a string. However, when we try to add up, say, the distances of the first two rows, 123 and 148, again, since we got it as a string, then when we added it, all that did was just string concatenated it. So instead of getting that as a string, we're going to have to get it as the appropriate data type. So. Let's go back to our table right now. So it looks like flight ID is definitely a string. Departure location or column two is a string. Arrival location is a string. But column four, five are both dates. Column six is a double. And then the last column, column eight, is a Boolean. So let's make those changes right now. So again, column four is actually a date. So we'll say get date, same with column five. And then column six was gonna be our double, right? That's our distance. And then the last column is going to be a Boolean. So this way, we're not gonna be getting them as strings, we're going to be getting them as the, as the data type that they were stored. Now I mentioned that whenever we use one of these get and then data types, you can either specify the column index or you can specify the actual column name itself. So with this last column on time, we can either say that this is the eighth column, or we can just say, get me the data from this uh, column name right here. So let's actually test that out right now. So instead of saying get Boolean from column number eight, we're gonna say get Boolean from the column on time. And this way you don't have to remember the column indexes. So if we now save this and run it, this should work. But now we get the data as its appropriate data type. And now it is indeed adding up our numbers rather than string concatenating them. 
So that is how to get the results set from this method right here, execute query. Now, the method for doing this, if you decide to use this method right here, execute the generic general method, then it's, it's just about the same, but there's a slight difference to it. So when we use execute query, we get our results set directly in the return value. But if you were to use this method execute, then you could send queries or updates to the database. So that means you're not always going to be getting a result set in the return value. And if you remember from our previous episode, you're actually only, you're going to be getting a Boolean in your return value. It's going to be turning true if the statement is a, if the your statement turned is a result set and then false otherwise. So you're going to first need to check if you have a true statement, right? If you have a results set. So let's do that right now. We'll say if command, again, if this execute method returns a true statement, then that means that we have a results set. So we're gonna say if command, and then we're going to copy all of this right here. And let's just say if if false, then we'll just say um, logger dot log no results set was returned. All right. Oops, I think we did that in the wrong area. So let me just cut that out and paste that where it should be. All right, that looks good. All right, so, and let me also just tab that in once. All right, so now we're checking if the command has a result set. If it does, then we're going to be doing the exact same process. But now we don't really have, again, we, where do we access our results set object? Well, it's not going to be in the command. It's actually located within the statement itself. So we're going to say, let results set equal statement. And then we're gonna have to use the method get results set. And that is how we access the results set from the statement. So instead of saying query.next, we're going to say rs.next, and we're gonna do that for each of these right here. All right, and now let me uncomment this first one right there. All right, so now if we save this and run it, we should get the exact same result. So let's see if we do. And there we go, it says, oops, it says query is not defined. Oops, that's just because we forgot to comment that out. But we do in fact get the same exact result and we see that we are indeed adding up the distances. So that is how you would get the result set if you were using this method execute right there. Now I wanna show you one more thing again. This will indeed work because we're, we're checking if the command is actually a result set. If we decide to send in an update rather than a query, and as you can see, I have an update statement right there. Then if we run this, it's going to log for us no result set was returned. And there we go. So that is how to get the result set, parse it, and then use it in App Script. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. It really means a lot to me and I'll see you in the very next episode.